Uh, so, so what what are the things that uh, that uh, that Amlo and Marina you know were able to do you know between you know 2018 and this year that you know in terms of implementing positive reforms? Yeah, I think it's a pretty solid um, you know social democratic uh, center left platform in the sense of what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, scholarships for students, uh, stay in school uh, scholarships, a series of cash transfer programs to the poorer classes. Uh, apprenticeships for non-students, um, a universal pension for seniors, a 65 and over pension, which is actually uh, set to set to increase. Uh, AMLO has always had a very particular uh, focus on senior citizens, and he started the first ever pension uh, in Mexico City uh, as, as the mayor as of 2000. Um, small business help, um, uh, benefits for the disabled, unemployment insurance, these things didn't exist. Uh, in Mexico before, or sometimes there were kind of token programs that were kind of uh, usually uh, ways to co-op certain constituencies. And what he's done in a lot of these cases is raise these to the level of a constitutional right uh, in, in, in a bunch of these cases, for example, the scholarships and the pension, in other words. So they're much, they would be much, much harder to roll back uh, in case that were to, uh, you know, conservative majority to come in later. Uh, help for farmers, um, price supports, um, you know, basic package of foodstuffs. The, AMLO's big push is to make Mexico sovereign again, both in energy and food. So help to farmers, which, you know, the countryside was devastated by by NAFTA, which, you know, big uh, push for immigration, trying to get Mexico to be self-sufficient again instead of importing most of its food or much of its food uh, from the United States. Um, a big push in energy to try to make Mexico um, self-sufficient in energy again. We saw in February when the lights went out in Texas, the lights went out for 4 million people in, in, in Texas, as, in Mexico as well. So you've got a country that's an oil producing country that through years of bleeding and neoliberal uh, counter reforms, Mexico's become dependent on United States um, refining its oil and selling it back as gasoline. So that's been a big push and that's gotten the most pushback on the international level. Um, minimum wage increase of 60%. It's still far too low, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, stable peso, uh, a public option for banking, which is what's called the banks of Bank of Wellbeing, which is an attempt to establish a public option in the face of a cartelized banking system where about six uh, international banks run the whole show here and bleed people dry, as in the States, with commissions, with, you know, fees, with, you know, overdraft charges, um, and anything you can imagine. Uh, marijuana legalization, um, that was a Supreme Court mandate, but they did go ahead and, and, and pass that, and they were also set to free federal prisoners uh, for nonviolent drug uh, offenses. Um, also, um, an amnesty law for for women who abort, who had abortions and were jailed, uh, indigenous prisoners uh, and such. Um, corporations getting corporations to pay taxes, pay back taxes that they weren't paying before. Um, and I think a big thing also is a uh, ban on genetically modified corn and uh, glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup in Monsanto's Roundup, and that's also got a big pushback. Um, you know, Mexico is the, the civilization that gave corn to the world. And, you know, it's been prey to GMO corn coming in and, um, and, and this toxic chemical glyphosate, which even the United Nations said is probably a, is a, probably a cancer, um, causes cancer. Uh, and that's been a big thing. Uh, warning labels on processed foods didn't exist here uh, before that. Mexico has a huge obesity problem. Um, second, I think, in the world, also as a result of processed foods flooding in uh, post-NAFTA. Uh, secret ballot for union elections, uh, a rolling back of outsourcing. So companies now can only do outsourcing for non-essential company functions, and outsource companies are on a national registry. Um, so you can't just outsource your entire company and have a shell company. That's just going into effect now. And actually, Mary Kay Cosmetics just uh, uh, filed an injunction against that, so they can continue to uh, exploit their workers down here. So anybody who's watching and uses Mary Kay, maybe we could uh, think about boycotting them. Um, public housing benefit has been reformed to help people who are underwater with mortgages, with them, um, with with public housing. Um, commissions on uh, pensions have been rolled back. Um, so that's, that's kind of in, in the social and the domestic uh, side. So I think it's a, I think it's, it's a defendable yeah, social that's, that's a, program. Right? 
yeah, I mean that. I mean that's a really impressive list of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of achievements. I mean, some of, I mean, especially, yeah, I mean, public banking having mm -hmm. uh, uh, put in the you know put in the protections, uh, you know the um, you know pensions for seniors, you know scholarships for low income students, making constitutional guarantees, you know of, mm -hmm. of those. Right. Like, like those are, I, I think, in, in almost any context, uh, those, those would be really big, you know, advances. Uh, but, you know, but especially in, you know, in Mexico, given the, um, you know, I mean, given the starting point, you know, those, those right. are, you know, those are really remarkable achievements. And, and I think that's probably important, you know, to, you know, to keep in mind, because I think, you know, I think some, you know, American leftists, maybe, you know, when they first hear... Mm -hmm. It's like okay, it's a center left party. It's a you know, it, it's it's a uh, it's a big tent within the party, and they've had to make you know coalitions deals you know uh, mm -hmm. out, outside of it. You know, forces that aren't so good, and they have, and you know, even within it, some people are you know maybe liberals, maybe not even you know, uh, and and they might you know hear all that and go okay, so you know what's what is there to get excited about here? But I mean mm -hmm. that that program you just rattled off for like five minutes. I mean that that is, mm -hmm. uh, I mean you're not going to get um, you know, regard, you know, even if Moreno, you know, was, was a very different kind of party. I mean, like, you're not going to be governing this, the, you know, uh, country, uh, you know, bordering the, uh, the United States and very much under its eye, you know, and, and have like, you know, workers control the means of production or something, you know, that's, that's, that's not going to be, <laughs> that's not going to be in the cards, but I mean, uh, that's, uh, um, you know, that kind of, I mean, look at the history of American intervention and, you know, Latin America for, of you course. Know, over over nothing, you know, over like extremely incremental, you know, reform. Over over much over much less than this, in, in a lot of instances. Yeah, right? exactly. Over much less than this, and this is mm -hmm. and this is a really remarkable. Uh, and so, I mean, this is a really remarkable series of uh, of accomplishments over the course of, of three years, especially over the course of three years that included uh, that included a year, uh, you know, a year more than a year of uh, of the COVID pandemic. And, right. the, uh, and the economic, you know, ripple effects of the COVID pandemic. Yeah, that's that's very important to point out. I think this is where some of the analysis uh, north of the border, all across the spectrum, is simply leaving something out, right? Because you get, you know, articles anywhere from the Economist to the Nation, basically saying, you know, AMLO has been a disappointment to, you know, the galaxy. Um, so why did Morena do so well in the midterms? Why can you know? It's like What's missing here that would point out that AMLO retained his majority during a pandemic, won 11 out of 15 governorships, uh, and 19 out of 30 state legislatures? Um, five of them, they won every single seat in those legislatures. Morena is not perfect. I'll be the first to say it. But, you know, in the middle of a pandemic that has toppled, you know, it toppled Trump, it toppled people all over the world. Governing parties have gotten hit everywhere on this. What's missing in these analyses that, you know, doesn't lead us to see what happened in these midterms? Now, <laughs> that's, I think, a very important point, because, you know, if, if you're kind of reporting based on ideology and not what's really happening on the ground, something's being left out here, right? And I think another thing to point out is that um, in foreign affairs, uh, Mexico has again started taking um, more of a lead role in Latin America than it used to. Remember, it, it sent a plane to, to save Evo Morales from Bolivia. Um, it's bucked um, the Organization of American States, which is a U.S. tool in a lot of cases. Um, it called out the United Nations for uh, not uh, releasing the patents on, um, on COVID vaccines. When, you know, the United States and Europe were very slow on vaccines, it made deals with Russia and China. So now, you know, Mexico is, I think, ninth in the world in the number of uh, vaccines uh, administered. Um, it um, put a break on the operations of the DEA down here under AMLO. The DEA basically had carte blanche to, you know, run around here with diplomatic immunity, you know, with guns, uh, all kinds of wayward operations. And now that, that's been, there's a break been put on that as well. So you see um, an administration no, which- no, no 2021 Mexican season of narcos. Yes. 
<laughs> you see an administration with, you know, with the compromises that it's had to make, and it's made some unsavory ones, for example, on migration, you finally see a government that is putting its own country first. This has been a free public preview of a patron-exclusive episode of Give Them an Argument. To get the rest of this episode and every other patron-exclusive episode, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess.